What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 8th edition of the BallerNerd.com podcast. My name is Daniel, and with me today, I have a few other guys. I have Ian. What's up? I have Peter. Hello. I have Zach. Hello. And lastly, I have Nathan. Why am I last? I don't know. <laughs> you're not first, you're last, <laughs> man. You gotta go fast. Screw you all. <laughs> anyway, um, let's just go ahead and jump right into it this week. Uh, first, we got, we got four games to cover. Uh, we're going to save the, the most... Popular one for last. I bet you can't guess what it is. Um, but firstly, let's cover it a little bit. Hello Kitty Island Adventure. Yes, exactly. And then Harry Potter. Play that shit all day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's cover a little bit about League first. Uh, a couple of days ago, they had a new uh, champion revealed, and now, now, now his abilities have been revealed. His name is Darius. He's like a uh, Noxian bruiser of sorts. Uh, looks like he has some bleeds. His passive is a bleed. It stacks, and then he has some. He has like an AOE and another bleed, and then some passives. And his ult is some kind of cleave you in half. And refreshes if it kills you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Right. It's like a Garen ult if it refreshed. Not really, but um, and I don't know where I haven't really paid attention to anything about for Riot for the last since, Two week and a half. since Tuesday for obvious reasons. But uh, have you heard anything about Darius yet, Zach? Yeah, I heard that he was revealed really recently, and I kind of read over it and his skills and everything. Mostly just makes me sad because Riot seems to only make bruisers, and then that's it. So we'll get you know, the next three or four champions will be bruisers, then we'll get a mid, then we'll get another three or four bruisers. And <laughs> it just seems like they're not putting any effort into kind of changing things up or yep. giving us different kinds. Mostly because Bruiser seems like to be their fallback thing where, you know, you can make it really easily. Yeah. But that being said, the new patch is going to have a lot more changes than that. They're going to have uh, graphic updates, which I'm really looking forward to. It's going to make the game look a lot cleaner, run a lot smoother on all levels of uh, quality. And play. Yeah, so they're going to make the game more beautiful. But one thing they're doing that we that I was talking to Kevin about that we just thought was stupid was the changes to draft mode. Uh, taking out the, you know, free stop, free champions from ranked, okay, that's fine. But now they're making it so that when you queue with people, like queue with your friends, if you get some kind of pug or some random guy, he has a one in five chance of, you know, being the person that bans. Yeah. Yep. And most of the time when my friends and I queue, we're doing it to try something out it's different, so we're going to make specific bands, etc. And I'm pretty sure, you know, Captain, you know, Faggot or whatever, who's going to be <laughs> yep. banning, is not going to cooperate and say, okay, we want to ban like Soraka, Timo, and Alistair or something like that. He's not going to ban that. Yeah. So, I think that's stupid. That is one of the that that is one of the downfalls about it. But but they I did I did see that they were uh, if there's you know if you guys are quad queuing that means whoever your leader is has an eighty percent chance of being it. So you still have a pretty good chance. And I guess it still gives the other guy. I think it's just because a lot of times if people queue by themselves, they end up getting last pick, which is inevitably a role that they usually don't want to play. Or they're like, yo, can I play top? And they're like, no, nah, fuck you. You know, because the, <laughs> the, guy, the first guy, or he'll be like, can I play top as Riven? And they'll ban Riven. You know, something like that. Uh, yeah. Just troll well, the, the counter that, though, was, and Kevin pointed out, if you don't like that, then get some friends. Yeah. <laughs> That's possible. <laughs> I have no friends, so... <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Um, back to what you were talking about, Darius. I think the reason, I think one of the reasons why they cover so many bruisers is because they can. Ju- most bruisers can jungle or they play top. So I guess they're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. Whereas if they're going to make a mage, chances are, with, the ex- with a few exceptions, of course, uh, they're going to be mid. That's true. You know, if they're going to make... There's more versatility. Yeah. Do you think it's just to give... Like, they're not seeing enough people jungling in the lower kind of... Uh, tiers of the game when people are like level 10 or whatever and so they're trying to entice people to try that out or do you think it's just something like like what you guys said I mean it, it seems to me like a, a company like Riot who's making a tremendous amount of money off this game is in a certain sense trying to guide where uh, people go Yeah, people go and they're looking at you know these statistics and they're saying hey uh, we're seeing way too many people uh Going range AD bottom or fight, vying for this range AD bottom or or AP mid and we need more bruisers and we need more solo tops. I don't know. Um, or jungles. For just for I'm curious. What was the last bruiser that they actually came out with? Was it Fior? Or was there somebody after her? 
Hecarim. It was Hecarim. Okay, you're right. Yeah. I completely forget about him because it's fucking Hecarim, and he pretty much only jungles. Um, yeah. from what I've seen. Um, but and then uh, like Zach said, they also did change the uh, the graphics updates for Summoner's Rift. They made some made some changes to the way things look. Uh, like the shopkeeper, the shopkeeper's like great grandpa Timo or something. Uh, with an infinity edge sticking out of his back and some other swords and stuff. Uh, and then so the big purple hippo guy's gone. So there've been a bunch of ready posts about like, you know, farewell his retirement week or whatever. And then <laughs> for lower end computer settings, it's supposed to. They said it's supposed to be a, a graphics, uh, an FPS improvement for you. Yeah, you know, like at least like double the improvement or something. Yeah, something like that. But, but the thing is, it looks like a lot, a lot better than how the original lowest settings look right now. So yeah. I don't even know how that's supposed to happen. Pre-rendered models. They oh, okay. essentially like you're loading like an image rather than a bunch of little images. Uh, it's like a single image. I mean, that's that's something they should have done like a really long time ago. I don't understand why they didn't. Yeah. And then there's also a new item. Which I'm interested to see on certain champions. Uh, I don't want to say the name of it because it's kind of, I don't know, it's dumb. But it's called the Fiend's Holy Grail. Uh, <laughs> it's it's upgraded from a, it's a Chalice of Harmony, a Fiendish, a Fiendish Codex, and a uh, Amplifying Tomb, I think. And basically, it has all those abilities in one. Obviously, it's got the mana, it's got a lot of mana regen like Chalice does. It's got some CDR and some ability power from the Codex and the Tomb. Uh, so certain champions are very are going to see a lot of use in it. Uh, Zach, what champions do you think you might use it on? I know you play bottom most of the time you play ad so you won't always you, well, you probably won't ever but uh oh yeah we're using it every game now <laughs> yeah right you get it pick it up on you know garen and riven and trading mirror well we were talking about it last night when specifically when the item was announced on who this is going to make stupidly strong and if you're going to put this on it's people that really spam their moves you're going to put this on people like oriana for sure and we putting this on probably people like maybe galio and stuff like that and the thing that's going to make this different is they're never ever going to run out of mana. Yeah. And another thing that might make this different is they may ne not need blue buff after they build this item. So you're going to have the blue buff on the jungler, and we're saying, man, I hope this item is balanced when it finally comes in because it certainly sounds like it's going to make the game a lot more difficult mm -hmm. where when you can't push them out of lane. Because normally, if they don't have blue, it's somewhat easy. Yeah. Well, not easy, but you can push them out of lane. When they build this, it seems like it's going to be next to impossible. Especially on the champions that, you know, like you said, that will spam their abilities. Even like a, a Nivea, you know, you can't really push, you know, the best thing to do with her, I guess, would be to run out of mana because she's so dependent on it. So if, if you know, like a Nivea doesn't have a blue buff, it's a joke most of the time. So, like you said, you know, you just yeah, exactly. push her out of lane if you want somebody who can push real well, like Cassiopeia or, you know, somebody with lots of strong Yeah, and push. Cassiopeia, you put the sun Cassiopeia, I don't see how you can put, possibly push her out of lane anymore. Yeah. I agree. Um, so moving on from League this week, uh, we'll cover a little bit more on that when the actual the, the Darius Champion Spotlight comes out and everything like that. So check back next week. We'll have, I'm sure, a treasure trove of more information. Uh, let's move on to, let's cover a little bit of WoW this week. Uh, hasn't been much going on in the WoW side for Blizzard because obviously there's, you know, something major looming this week. Just da, 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 da. But... Uh -huh. um, Foreshadowing. <laughs> no. Foreshadowing. Never. Um... But first, like, firstly, there's been some Druid form. I'm just going to cover a couple major things. Uh, the, the Druid form armors they've released this week, uh, it seems pretty cut and dry. Cody mentioned something about uh, there's, there's a setting, there's a way that they'll, they'll turn on. So far, the first one I saw was for cat form. So basically, if you're a horde, you have like an evil-looking cat form. And if you're a lion, you have a, like a tree, like you have bark on you and stuff. Uh, and they also did one for Moonkins. So I guess the people who were ready, I don't know why they did a cat form one because it's they did cat form changes, what? Cataclysm? Yeah. And they, they, Long time ago, yeah. Well, and they were minimal. At, no, at they best. were pretty major, considering you can go, go, go change the way your hair looks, and your hair, your form looks completely different. I thought, I thought it was, I was like, oh, this is kind of gay. Compared to, <laughs> I'm talking from the, I'm talking from the perspective of somebody who's been a cat, who's been a feral druid since feral druids were viable. If you've looked at that same cat ass for the last, I don't know, since BC, whenever, whenever they started playing them, I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a druid kind of guy, but uh, now you can just go change your hairstyle. And not only that, but each race looks different, which, you know, each race, you know, for the forms look completely different. Um, so I guess people were like, I just want to see my armor, because, you know, people are going to complain as long as they can. As long as, yeah. as, long as Riot, I, Riot, excuse me, as long as Blizzard will listen to them <laughs> and just, you know, give them something to shut them up. So they have armors now in those. Um, there's also a new a new scenario for that they've had a, a real short preview of called Fall of Theramore, so obviously that's been confirmed. 
um, scenarios or little parts in the game where I think you can, I think scenarios, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, are the ones where you don't have to have a, uh, a specific trinity of group, a group comp. You don't have to have one healer, one tank, three DPS. You can kind of just roll whatever. You can have no healers. Five healers. Five healers. You could, yeah. I guess you could run five healers. You could probably run five DPS, just have somebody take the hits. I don't know. Um, I know they, sh- they should have done this a long time ago with this game. Uh, it would have helped Q times because, you know, you, you know how Q times were for DPS. I mean, yeah. he played a, a Warlock. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, 45 minutes 45 for a dungeon min- that 45 took, minute Q time. took 20 minutes. It's yeah. stupid. 45-minute Q time, you wait 45 minutes, one person doesn't join, you had to Q, and then it takes 10 more minutes, and then you get in and then you're trolled, or then somebody leaves, and then it, it just... It's, it was just a, an awful experience where I've played other games. Uh, lately, the DC Euro game I've played, you can queue, There's a, they have options in there where you can queue to not have a uh, a, a role, basically. You can just queue for whatever. And that game's pretty loosely set on its roles where WoW is very strict on what is what, you know? Yeah. Tank, not, not now so much where loot is based on whatever your role is because people would take other people's loots and build childish and stuff. <laughs> uh, you'd have DPS going in there taking tank loot because they don't have yeah, gear. The, uh, just speaking of an other game, I think Warhammer Online, essentially, uh, it had some older WoW divs that had gone straight to that game, and they had a system like immediately where it was just like everybody gets their own loot, and you don't have to worry about that shit. Kind so. of yeah, well, Too bad the game sucked, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Warhammer, get the shit out of here. Uh, Couldn't save them. Yeah, my friend, I had, a, I had a couple of friends that played it a lot, and they were they liked it. They, it was, they were losers. They, well, they liked it, and then uh, they were done. Um, so, and there was also this uh, new, there was this legendary item that they've been talking about, and I don't know a whole lot about it, not going to lie, but apparently you get it from Rathion, who's the guy you rogues got their daggers from. Breath of the Black Prince is what it's called. Uh, there's some faction quests that kind of go along with it. It's supposed to be able to upgrade your gear, uh, some new legendary item. It's it's the the text on it actually says greatly empower any piece of shy touched equipment, remove all existing gems what? and enchantments. So apparently it just buffs it's a buff to a piece of shy touched equipment. Which shy, if you didn't know, are the uh, the negative rep like the like horde negative alliance armor. went to Pandaria and caused all this drama, and the shy spawned from negative energy. So there's all these demons, ghosts, spirits that are negative that are the enemies of the Pandaren or whatever. So, and then that's my understanding of it. And then it, obviously, hmm. on, you know, it has the things you need to do. And it's just kind of hinting toward it. So we'll see whatever the hell that thing is. Um, moving on from WoW this week, uh, let's talk a little bit about StarCraft this week. I know it's probably been a different week considering it's been a, a, a major Blizzard game week. But let's just talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I haven't. With finals, with moving and playing certain other games, I haven't gotten around to much StarCraft. I've been watching much StarCraft, admittedly. Um, MLG Spring Arena is going on right now. Um, I've watched a couple games. Unfortunately, I am so poor I was not able to buy the pass. So I was able to watch a couple MVP, or not MVP, um, MMA versus MC was the big game I watched, which was a pretty good game mc displayed some amazing um timings with a uh, two base attack against mvp in the third game especially um he was just really good at keeping everything on lockdown <coughs> um make sure mvp couldn't really expand while he himself expand all over but other than that i mean i don't really know much else what's been going on in the starcraft world there was apparently a really big finals at the GSL um, involving an Archon toilet with battle cruisers. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah. They really nerfed that though. They did, but it's still possible. So um, God, you're really, really lucky. Yeah, I. I think they nerfed it to where like you have a second of invulnerability once you come out of a, um, a mothership hole, whatever the hell it's called. Yeah. Vortex. Um, yeah, Vortex, there you go. But um Positionally it was probably just too strong. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I, I need to watch the VOD. But other than that, there hasn't much going on. Battlegrounds, uh in uh Houston 
not Houston, Austin, Texas is going to be next week, I believe. That's the big oh, Red yeah. Bull event. So, and Anaheim is coming up as well, where of course you can play Heart of the Swarm. Oh, so, nice. that's all going on. Other than that, there hasn't been really much anything new because of um, other certain games. Hey, but one good thing, Overlords move faster. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Wait, what, are they are they making so you don't have to uh, upgrade the? Uh, uh, no, no, they, they move like you know, twenty percent faster. You'd be. But that saves them from a lot of things, and also they uh, buff the queens lately. I think last week or so. Yeah, yeah. they increase the, the range the range for ground attack. Interesting. Yeah. So banshee yeah. banshees are less viable. Oh, I'm guessing no, early. For ground, not for ground, ground, not air. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So basically, they're fine. They can easily defend against reapers now and other forms of harassment, like such as like hellions, reapers, and all that stuff. Yeah, not reapers. The reapers. 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 Quick, call shepherd. Sorry. Hmm. Uh, Couldn't uh, resist. Wrong game. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I still haven't beaten Mass Effect Two yet. Ah, uh, you're scrub. I haven't either. I, I got I got sidetracked with uh. Uh, a Blizzard game this week. So, what Blizzard game are you talking about? I don't know. Um, Hello Kitty Boston Online, Lions. obviously. Hello Kitty Online. Should we tell him? Yeah. Should we tell him? I think we should. I think we should. Okay. Uh, in case you were living inside of a cardboard box this week uh, that was shipped off was. the coast of Africa, 120 miles out, uh, while being encircled by sharks, so you couldn't talk to anything, and the sharks hadn't heard about it because they might have told you too. Uh, Diablo 3 was released this week, uh, this past Tuesday. No way. I uh, know. I can't believe I'm that. I'm just, I, I, surprise. Ah. Um, what game have I been playing? <laughs> I, was, I was playing Diablo 2. God That's dang what it. it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was great. Thank you for that. <laughs> Diablo 2. <laughs> okay, so first off, um, my th- I'm just going to give you my thoughts initially. Uh, let's just cover different parts of it since this is going to be our major topic for this week. Uh, let's talk about the launch first. My initial thoughts, I like, uh, my, it was me, myself, uh, that guy named, that uh, another friend, and me, myself, that's two people. That's two people, I'm two people, damn it. Uh, myself, yeah, my friend Brett, uh, another friend of mine, James, and Cody from Bolivar.com. We were all playing together. And we were all sitting there at launch, just like Zach and Marcus and the other guys were, which they were on the stream. So I was watching you guys doing the same thing, repeatedly typing in your password. I think the, it's, I think I think you can tell what my password is now. I'm like looking at my keyboard, uh, because the keys are worn down. For the, about the first 45 minutes, how long did it take you guys to get in, Zach? Oh, he died. Okay, never mind. He's dead. But um, I think it, I think it took him like 50 or so minutes because they were just trying and trying. Eventually, they uh finally got in and they started streaming but then streaming didn't work with xsplit for some odd it wasn't working for me either. reason um the it took me 40 it took us 45 minutes the same uh, pretty much the same it you got past the i was sitting there on my character screen just smashing enter 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 just i'd all tab back in i'd Look at some for thirty seconds. I'd look at the posts, watching people grab, watching people running down the street with pitchforks. <laughs> what? It's a, it's, a, it's a metaphor. People running butt naked down the street with pitchforks, headed towards California, <laughs> just because. Oh, the internet was exploding at that point. It was nuts. Uh, just, yeah. just that experience alone, it was memorable. Uh, Ian, were you playing at launch or no? I know you were. No, the internet was... I, I had. I mean, actually, I stayed up and I was like, yeah, yeah, like. I'm gonna fucking play this game, and like, I had it installed, was ready to go, and just kind of like sitting there waiting, and I kind of fell asleep. So <laughs> what? what a scrub! What? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow! And you want to play Diablo too? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey! It's trying to be over, okay? Yeah. Oh, With funny. it's 64 Nintendo graphics, eight classes here. I know more classes, <laughs> right? And more content. <laughs> Uh, Peter, have you played any of it? I've been playing a nice little amount. I didn't play any on launch. I had to, well, at least at midnight or whenever it came out, I played a little bit the next day, mm. but I had trouble with servers and had stuff to do. Yep. So I was able to start playing really until Thursday. Ah, I see. Um, connection issue-wise, I think for what happened for us, because I uh, we played pretty much from, well, we were there pretty much on from 2 a.m., 
till noon the next day probably. Um, and then Cody, Cody got Cody, me and Brett were still playing. Uh, the other guy we were playing with went to bed about an hour before we did, and then Cody was like, "I'm tired too." So I was like, "Whatever, we'll go to bed." And I think I slept three hours, woke up, and started playing again. Because I took the next day, off. so I, I played a lot. I, I got to level forty. I was like forty-two by Wednesday or whatever, and then I haven't. Now, I'm only forty-six now, so I haven't played it much, obviously. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but let's talk about the the initial the uh, the way the launch worked. I mean, not the way the launch, it didn't the, work. The downtime <laughs> of it. I think um, it didn't work. The, obviously, it took a while to go to for that, and then I think sometime that morning, it went down again. And then it went down again. Yep. So it was a pretty rough patch. And then at one point, by the time the servers had stabilized, me and Brett were playing, and I lost the internet connection for four hours. Comcast had an outage in my area. <laughs> I pretty much came unglued on the phone with the Comcast people. <laughs> you started crying. <laughs> yes. Please. Why? I've been waiting <laughs> for this game. It was just bad timing. Uh, what do you guys think about what happened with the launch? Uh, I, I'm just. Uh... I guess you have to expect it with Blizzard games nowadays because they always underestimate how popular the game will be, especially games such as Diablo 3, which has been in production for 13 years. So even if, even if they did the stress testing, it's kind of like they didn't even take that data that they had and apply it to the game. It's just like, oh, we're going to do a stress testing and totally ignore all the stuff and just hope it all goes for the better. Yep. But obviously it imploded. And didn't go that well. I would say it imploded, exploded, outro ploded, <laughs> exploded. You could think of. But think? it's but it seems like now there's finally kind of get things sort of rolling on the hot fixes, patches, fixing exploits. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that exploit uh, yesterday they just fixed. I was kind of sad about. What was it? Uh, apparently, there's a resplendent chest right past the Oasis in Act Two. Mm -hmm. And they were there were two pretty big name streamers like Nethid and uh, Kriparian, I think. And they they were streaming the exploit like the entire day on uh, I think hell difficulty and getting tons and tons of loot. And pretty much like a few hours after I started doing it, uh, patched. they yeah patched. So what and, was the ex was it just not re was it not like these it, it or was like going away yeah you could uh you could like endlessly farm it it was five minutes like five seconds away from a waypoint and then once you got your, your loot you could go back to town and reload your game and then it would be there again basically hmm. it, and it was like a hundred percent chance of getting a gold chest with either rares gems or like sometimes if you're in on inferno uh like a legendary inside yeah so basically, it was like it was chest farming from Diablo 2 all over again. I think the legendaries are very curious items because Cody got his. He got his MC Hammer Jammer pants, which are actually all Hammer Jammers. <laughs> uh, he got his from a, like a barrel. Huh. Like, oh, yeah. Like he, is that isn't that where you got yours from, Ian? Like yeah, so I think so actually. Has, like not a, it wasn't a, a boss or a gold chest or uh, anything crazy. It was just a barrel. I think so. I think uh, Brett just walked up and punched a barrel and killed it and was like, "Oh my god, what is this?" So <laughs> apparently, we have to be this link in all of our games, yes. smashing yeah, all house pots. Yes, Very quick. Legendaries, call, give it. Call Donkey Kong. He smashed barrels. Um. Let's talk about class thoughts. Uh, let's start at the top first. Let's talk about Barbarian. Uh, I know, Nathan, your, your, yeah. your character you have right now is a Barbarian. What do you think about that? It's very sturdy. If I, uh, like the lower levels, you can do anything you want. You can be like a DPS kind of guy and just jump inside elite packs and just smash them to bits. It seems like once you get up to the higher levels, you're kind of forced into one role, which is like kind of like the tank role, so the rest of your party doesn't get... Torn to shreds, yeah. yeah. So it it kind of like limits the play style that you can be later on, which is kind of sad. But it's kind of sad. I feel, yeah, but I I'm still having a lot of fun, and I'm guessing that maybe once other people get as geared, maybe other people can be tanks, and then we'll see some more diverse kind of like gameplay from a barbarian instead of just a sword and board tanking kind of guy. Yeah, 
I know the uh, group that I'm playing with right now, Cody in our group, he was, sometimes he would run tank, we would just try out different things. Sometimes he would tank, sometimes the monk in our group would tank. And uh, Cody's tanking gear was pretty much just stamina and vitality, and he would, yeah. he had 15,000 life, whereas the monk had 8,000, but he would dodge almost everything. So, so, so yeah, it seems like more like a, uh, like kind of like a wow kind of thing where Paladin is like the uh, Saint Sword and Board and the Druid is a monk where he just dodges everything. Yeah, I'm so kind of. Kind of sad. He wasn't stacking a bunch of decks. Yeah. And well, you know, obviously he stacks decks. So, uh, so I think the, but I think the Barbarian class is in a pretty good, it's okay so far, I guess. I haven't played it personally. Yeah. But from what I, just from what I've seen with Cody play, uh, it looks very entertaining with lots of you know, head smashing and jumping and charging and pulling things to you and just destroying stuff and knocking everything all over the place. And I like it when he I like it when he has his leap with the knockback on. So as I drop my meteors in the group because I have the arcane one, so he'll drop like five of them. He'll jump in, knock them all out, and the meteors won't hit him. Lots of fun. Um, <laughs> Peter, what class are you playing by just by chance? I'm playing Demon Hunter. Okay. I was gonna go with um, oh, what is it um. Uh, Witch Doctor. Mm-hmm. I played him during um, during the beta, but I just ran him spur of the moment decided to go with Demon Hunter at the last second. So I've been having fun. Um, one of the things I really like is the uh, bullet shot and just watching him explode. <laughs> I haven't gone too far up. I'm level 17 or 18 right now, so I, I haven't been able to really analyze the different skills. I'm still tinkering around with them. Mm-hmm. I really like doing the vault and then uh, Phantom Knives and Vaulting Out again. Mm-hmm. That's been a lot of fun. But other than that, I haven't been playing with too many people. I played with my cousin a couple times and my friend, but otherwise I've just been going it solo. Oh, okay. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. One of the guys we're playing Demon Hunter with, he's, uh, I think he's 40, uh, maybe 40, maybe 38, 40. He's, he hasn't played as much as us. Uh, but he's he, he has a legendary quiver. It dropped off of a... Dang. A normal white mob, just oh, wow. it, it was just yeah it wasn't it wasn't anything fun, fancy like the mob he got it off of, uh, but I didn't know it was legendary. He was like, hey guys, I think I got something good because you know it's gold and yellow, and we were in like the uh, the the Zoltan cool place or whatever I call him Zoltan, uh, yeah. <laughs> Zoltan, but there's lots of sand, so I couldn't really you couldn't really tell the difference from what it looked on the ground. I was like, oh you got a rare quiver. He's like, no, it's a legendary. I'm like, what? I'm like, what? I'm like, what? what, what, what? Because we had we had, for then it was I had watched some of the method streams, yeah, uh, about their kills and I haven't like they'd kill like butcher on Inferno and uh, I watched him kill Skeleton King and there was no legendary items that dropped from for the obviously for the person who was playing. We we had we saw blues that's all we saw and I was like oh yeah. blues and Inferno and I'm like what what is this madness? Um, <laughs> anyway, let's keep talking about the classes here. So we got that, yeah, we got that demon hunter. Uh, let's talk a little bit about monk. I know Ian, you have a monk right now. Yeah, okay. I'm sitting at around 40, 41. Uh, and the biggest problem I'm having is actually like closing distances and mobility. What? Really? Mobility really? and closing distance. Here's the here's the why. I know Brett you have said, like a level. Red said the same thing. Level. You have like a level no. 20 monk. You have a level 20 monk. It's it's. Trust me, it's different. Um. The and it just seems to be just like just bad design. Um, they don't really know what they were kind of going for because by forcing you to use a uh, just like a spell for mobility, um, you sacrifice a lot. I mean, it, it's different, I guess, when you have um, it's different when you have like a modifier. Like I know my one of my generators, which is the first spell you get the. Fist of Thunder has a modifier where I'll instantly teleport to wherever I'm targeting, which is tremendously helpful. Um, you lose a little bit of single target DPS because you're, as a monk, you're spamming your modifiers more than anything, or your generators more than anything. Um, but even then, like, still having just horrible, horrible mobility issues. I can't get to where I want to be in the fight um, without sacrificing a tremendous amount of damage. Yep. Well, I... I have to use one of my uh, my leap for one of my abilities, so it's kind of the same for me. But I don't really care about it. I think it. it's the same with almost any class. So of course you have to give up something for mobility. You can't just have it well, on a only uh, having six slots. It's yeah, yeah. Major. If it was, I think like if it was seven, it would be they kind of like let you double up on a skill or like a. I mean, I know you can do the elective mode and everything, but 
It, and for those of you that don't know, elective mode is essentially you just go into options and you can select uh, spells from multiple skill categories. So, like well, I could have two generators on my on my mouse buttons, for example. Yeah, you could have. Well, uh, I, I found that was pretty nice, but I ended up even with using elective skills. I always just use one spell from each uh, category because it, it kind of like rounds out your class, and it, you kind of need it for. Uh, higher modes because I, I I had a gap closer, basically a life steal, and then I have two different like uses of my rage. Yeah, and that's pretty much like how it's set up for in the uh, skill trees anyway. So mm. See, like, wow, I have two energy dumps or that are just huge. That are like 50, 50 uh, spirit. So and that and I seem to be fine. Like I just like keep my spirit around like twenty and they're. Yeah, I just try to keep dropping it down, and and that seems to work pretty well. I, I'm doing much more damage than I think most people are. Mm -hmm. Zach, are you back yet? No. Nope. Okay, moving on. <laughs> um, the uh, next class, uh, witch doctor. Um, I don't think anybody here. What's the highest? Who has the highest level witch doctor here? I have a level one. <laughs> Besides you. I, <laughs> I don't. I guess nobody. I don't. Nobody okay. really does. <laughs> Uh, Clearly so, not the most popular class. Not the most popular yeah. class. Uh, Cody also, Cody has one that's like level 10. Uh, I know, Peter, you said you played around with him on the beta, so uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't get too far. I saw there was a lot of um, snaring things he had. Um, I don't know. The one thing that I liked about him was that he was like the Necromancer, which I played in Diablo 2. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, I, I, I got to like, what, level 7 with him. So... I can't really say much about him, but I, he's definitely going to be my next uh, my next character I make. Mm -hmm. yeah, he also seems like someone that's going to be good for hardcore because yeah. his pets do most of the damage, and he just sits back and runs away. CC Someone's as far pets, as like keeping yeah. guys off of you or your party, mm -hmm. phenomenal. I played with him this morning, and um, the guy left. the guy was pretty much able to get everything away from from the group yeah. we had because we had like two wizards and a monk and then uh, a witch doctor and yeah uh, it was it was like a wall of zombies literally i mean like i think that's actually a spell but i'm saying more towards <laughs> the uh, uh i understand idea how it works i yeah. think well if they can't hit you you know if there's other things to hit they're gonna they they probably hit them instead you know yeah um and lastly, we have the wizard class. Uh, I know you guys have played, played them a little bit. My wizard is, uh, I'm the only person that I, in this group, in this uh, collection of people we have, of strange people we have, that has what above like 20, 30. So uh, my first thoughts when I first played them was uh, kind of boring because you only get like some single target spells at first. And I didn't play in the beta. I, I played on the beta to like level six. So I didn't know what the hell was going on. Uh, so I'm like, okay, I have a, a little single target. Oh, I got a single target. Oh, oh, this one is AOE. Oh, but it explodes when the first target it hits, so it's kind of single target. Oh, okay, cool. And then I started getting, like, you know how you have your fourth button? I, yeah. I got the first one of that, and then I started getting combos where I'd run in and just decimate a whole group, and Cody and Brett and the other guys were like, what the hell just happened? I'm like, I'm like <laughs> I fuck shit up, son! <laughs> uh, so I started getting, once I started getting Meteor and I got an Explosive Blast, I had combos. I'd run in. I'd throw my meteor because it takes two or three seconds to land. I'd run in. I'd explode. I'd do this explosive thing, which takes like, two seconds to trigger. So it'd be so those would trigger at the same time. And as that happened, I would simultaneously freeze everything, so everything would be dead. Uh, and that lasted up until probably nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started changing up my things. And like if I play solo right now, a lot of my abilities are defensive. Uh, even if, if if I'm playing with, I haven't played with a witch doctor yet, so uh, I'm sure if if there's lots of summons, that'll be help. Uh, a lot of them, I'm using armors, I'm using mirror images, I'm using hydras because half the time I'm running for my life, so I can't really do that much damage. So mm -hmm. a lot of my a lot of my damage is coming from my hydras, uh, which are the, the little snakes that come out of the ground. And you have different elements. You can have frost, lightning, fire, arcane, which all have different. They all, all have their benefits. Some do AOE damage, some slow. Uh... Uh, but now I feel kind of stupid because once one of my wizard friends just used that, I thought it was a mob. So I spent like I think ten seconds trying to kill it. I was like, "What is this thing? I never seen this before." But they do have some of those is. rare creatures actually. That's like uniques. Yeah. I don't know if you bumped into those. Yeah, I've seen a couple. 
but overall, I think it's a it's a very the way that I was building when in my groups, I was very glass cannon from from normal to nightmare. I'm sure once we get to, I'm almost at hell. Once I hit, by the time you hit fifty, you go to hell. Uh, but no pun intended. Well, actually, yeah. pun intended. Uh, but they're going outside again. That's hell. By then, yeah, all right, Texas. But. <laughs> I will be running probably lots of defensive oriented things. I mean, if I get killed in two or three hits, that's usually how it works. Especially if it's a boss like one of the one of the lame combos like a uh, jailer desecrator, or not jail a jailer mortar. You guys seen that one yet? Uh, no, yeah. I where he I roots you in place and then throws mortars at you, and you can't oh, die, is, uh, it, and you have four thousand health and hit you for two thousand. Yeah. You just gotta stay up close next to them because they can't lob it that close to their body. So. Yeah. It's good for barbarians. You're just like, oh, oh. And you're gonna be close to them anyway. I'm do I'm running for my life with and the way they, the, the the way teleport is now, I don't really like it. A lot of people who are were like the Owl Two Sorcerers fans are not gonna like it because at base it has a sixteen second cooldown and you can use it once. Huh. And it's not nearly the the distances you can go is not the same as you remember Sorceress, you could drag your cursor to the corner of the screen, click it, and you can go to the corner of the screen. What about rune though? Rune that's not gonna. I haven't checked out any of the rune, for it, so. The runes that I have so far, the first one, when I land, I take thirty percent less damage for a few seconds. Which a lot of times I'm teleporting out, not in. But sometimes I tell. Sometimes I play. I play uh, risk reward aggressive, and I just run in and just blow everything up, which works. Uh, there's also one that does a force wave, an AOE knockback once I land, which could could you know be useful situationally. There's one where you can use it twice, but you have a second to do it. So once you land, you have one second, and it, it it's not loop. It's not, it don't play. It, it's it's one second, uh, to use it again. So you have to go boom boom, and then there's one. Uh, think LeBlanc's uh, deceive kind of thing. Yeah. You can teleport, and then within eight seconds, you can teleport back to your original location. Huh. And then there's one more that I haven't unlocked yet because I'm not high enough level. Uh, which those are just stealing ideas from League of Legends. Yeah, right. Well, I think that one's cool, uh, just based on a deceit, just based on just tricking the you know the mobs. You're running away and you poof, and you're gone. Uh, but so that's all the classes. Uh, let's cover a little bit about the difficulty. What do you guys think about normal? Too easy. It's normal. It, I'm guessing I'm still in it, so. normal is just like story, and then once you get done with the story. You can just go on and have some fun. Story, we were going to there. Yeah, I didn't see any of the story. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem with playing with friends. Yeah, Dan. I played through Act Two, like the first quest where you go kill the the, the little uh, butterfly lady, Magatha or whatever. I killed her like five times because we were trying to catch people up. Um, and I also killed Act One. I did Act One Nightmare like four times. Um, but I think I think normal difficulty is pretty much where it should be because the certain you gotta think of the certain people who are playing this game, first timers picking it up. Who, who say if they were, you know, seven years old when Diablo was was popular. Yeah. Now they're fifteen. You know, now they're fifteen. So it, it's like gets people back to, uh, back to being getting used to the game, how it yeah. works, how it works. And, and this stuff. game has its own unique, you know, thing. So people, even even long time fans, have to come back and learn a little bit about it. Especially some people who hadn't played Diablo for some people didn't. Ages. Some people didn't play the expansion of Diablo. They didn't play Lord of Destruction. So they're coming back and they're like, I know a couple people like that. So they have no idea what's going on. So I think normal mode will help them get weaned in, get get them interested. Um, yeah, but addicted, addicted. Yeah, that's another word way to put it. But I think nightmare <laughs> is very cool too. Uh, I think nightmares, it's good where it should be. Sometimes where it's like when we started, we were like, oh my god, this is hard. What the hell? And then we got three or four drops each from nightmare. And then just we went from, I mean, we literally went from dying to. One one pack of blue mobs to just destroying two ep, two elite bosses stacked up together. So it's just based. I think it's just based on your gear. And you know, by then we yeah. can learn more about it. Like I didn't know like for wizards and for anybody weapon damage if your skill like because advanced tool tips. Do you guys have those on? Yes. Yeah, I didn't know. Always have them on. I didn't know yeah. that. I understood that they were advanced and they were going to give you maybe some math about it. But I didn't understand that they weren't. They were going to leave out information when they're not advanced. Oh uh, yeah. They literally, if if they're just they 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 just don't tell you anything, at all. Like in WoW, like the 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 beginner tool tip for Hammer of Justice is use this on your target if you don't want them to hit you. Or no shit. <laughs> or otherwise it stuns them for six seconds. You don't know how long it's gonna work. But so I don't understand. I don't understand the mindset about it. They should just leave them on, because even the advanced ones aren't that advanced. 
it'll, it'll tell you a percentage of the weapon damage, which is useful once you figure it out because, you know, you're thinking, okay, do I need more of my main stat? You know, could it be, it could be strength, dex, intellect, or intelligence, or do you want more weapon damage? But, see, weapon damage matters for wizards, which is weird because I didn't think it would. I was using, like, this 20 damage little sword, and then I got it to, like, a 95 damage staff, and I just, my, my, all my damage doubled from everything. Uh, and obviously, we ha- none of us have been to hell. I will be Sunday night, hopefully. Uh, and you guys probably will, too. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, have you guys read anything about hell, Ian? Not too much. Um, uh, one second. Give me- I just gave him a pretty nice rare. He's like, oh, my God. Okay, uh, moving on. <laughs> um, I noticed the Inferno, <laughs> some of the Inferno difficulty. Uh, I've seen some of it. I think I don't know what the world progression is right now because apparently people are taking this seriously and playing world progression in a in a dungeon crawler game. But uh, I think method. I see. I keep I keep seeing posts about method. I don't know if anybody else is further than that. Actually, someone beat it on Inferno uh, solo already. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Uh, um, the, as a uh, wizard. I don't know, I, I don't really find this game difficult enough yet. I'm, I mean, I'm only a nightmare. I read, I read a lot of posts yeah. in the forums about like people saying that uh, this game's not, not hard enough. Um, I think that the hell mode should will be a little bit harder. I And I know you definitely have to farm hell for Inferno, is what they were saying. Um but uh, I think it's just I think it's I think people who are complaining that's not difficult enough. Well, some of the people who are people who haven't even been there yet, but they're saying, <laughs> oh my yeah. god, these people are on on Inferno already. But you got to keep in mind it's Diablo. You know, it's not a hardcore raid. I mean, it's not it's not a heroic twenty five man, you know, raid. And it's not. And people are complaining that they people have already beaten on normal. Like some people yeah. complain like this game is too short. And I think one of the posts was saying what, they were just. They, one of the, I think it was Bash, Yawker, Zarheim or something, straight up said, you know, this isn't Skyrim, you know, you're not meant to, it's not a game that you're supposed to have 100 hours of gameplay on. You're, they don't understand what Diablo is about. So, like, coming back to the new players. Because, you know, Diablo was not a narrow about the amount of game, the time it took to play the game. It was, yeah. it was the, the gearing up. It's, the, and the, it's the fun you have playing yeah. the game. There we go. Yeah, but see, I was, like, if it's not challenging enough, then if it's not a persistent challenge... Uh, then it, I think it, it misses the mark because um, it doesn't really have that kind of like longevity of play. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you're not. I'm, well, I've been getting my butt well, kicked in Nightmare a little bit here and there. So I'm pretty yeah. sure Hell and Inferno will kick my butt just as well. Uh, and obviously, I think with the, uh, with the mobs, they're going to, you know, they'll add them, they'll add abilities. Uh, like I never saw the arcane ability on norm, on an, on normal mode, where they spawn that little crystal and then it puts out the little cousin, the little laser beam of death. Yeah, I never saw that. So I assume for hell and inferno, we'll <laughs> have more treats and unexpected things for us. Instant one hit shot kills. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm abilities. Sure, I'm sure they, they had to have some of those. It's a, it's a damn game, you know. I mean, it's it's probably not going to make it as obvious as wow, you know, it's not going to tell you on your screen, move out, and then people screaming at you and you still stand there and die. Call any names, but uh, Ian. <laughs> but we know how that goes. Let's go ahead and wrap it up for Diablo. Uh, anything left to say, Ian? Uh, I just hope that uh, they can address some of the issues immediately with the auction house. Um, and I do wonder what uh, exactly they're going to do about like keeping prices decently high for the real money auction house because that's part of the thing if this game isn't uh like long enough and they can't keep people playing it how are they gonna you know the auction house will flop yeah yes because okay. you're just gonna have farmers you'll have just... you'll have no demand so well, we already so. had a, we, already, we already had like pretty much some farming yesterday with the exploit so the auction house is already kind of fucked up well the, the real money auction house don't go live till 29th but yeah, that's true. You know, uh, I think I think you're right. I think if there's too much supply, not enough demand, then prices will obviously go down. So you'll be getting. So it'll be harder to make money off of the auction house, which I don't really intend to do anyway. But I know. Uh, I people. definitely did. Uh, did I, would, I wouldn't say did just yet. I'd give it a chance. It hadn't even come out yet. Damn it. Yeah. I'll I'll, I'll float on that for now. <laughs> <laughs> just just let it just let it sit. Let it let it. Festive. Uh, Peter, do you have anything else to add about Diablo from this week? Um, the one thing I wanted to mention was the DRM thing. Mm-hmm. Um, as someone who doesn't have a very good internet connection currently, 
Um, sometimes I'll get disconnected. I'll lag a lot. And the main problem is when I get disconnected is then the map will reset. So say I've been looking for some kind of quest objective and I've covered pretty much the whole map. I'm going to find it in a second and then I'll disconnect and have to start that search all over again. And it's really pissing me off. It does suck. Yeah. It's happened to me. If I mean, I, I actually kind of like it. More XP for me. Yeah, but you're Asian. Like, you <laughs> like the hardcore grind. You're grindy. Yeah, go, go, <laughs> go play Ion. Get out of here, man. <laughs> well, the thing is, it also uh, respawns your rare and elite mobs. So that's also a good thing. But I can, for, please refer to like, my, uh, my, my you, statement yeah. 15 seconds. You totally missed the point, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey. hey. Just, if I want to do that, I just log out and log back in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know why you Brilliant do that. point. Brilliant point. Um, Nathan, what do you think about Diablo this week? About. Uh, the difficulty or like the game in general? In general. In general. I think it's a nice polish on Diablo 2, but it's not new enough to like really be a really like groundbreaking game. It's just a good game right now. Like mm -hmm. they did all, all the things they needed to do to improve on Diablo 2, but they didn't really do like up and beyond. Because like there's still some things that kind of like irk me about the auction house, but there's still some good things. So it's like makes it good and bad, but it's not a amazing game. It's just a good game. I understand. That's my thing. Uh, yeah. My thoughts about it. Uh, I think so far it's turned out well for me. We'll see what happens with Hell and Inferno. Uh, we'll see the playability. <laughs> the the re the replayability is a main a lot a main a major thing with this game because you. Again, you get through it so fast. A lot of the replayability in Diablo 2 was because you couldn't... Once you made your character, if you made a Javazon and that was it. she got the max level, or she got a high level, I should say, because max level was 99. Um, and you were like, man, I, I got this cool bow. I want to try this out. You couldn't respec her. Like in this game, you couldn't change your runes up or put the item on. You had to completely revamp everything. You had to, you had to completely remake her from level 1. So there was replayability right there. Boom. Done. This game, if you have more than you, you can have one wizard, one witch doctor, one barbarian, one demon hunter, and one monk. That's pretty much what I have right and now on my just, character screen. Exactly, and you just change up what you need, which I think is good because I don't, I never, I never like. That's why I kind of got tired of it. I was like, man, I'm tired of doing normal mode den of evil or you know whatever regular den of evil back in Diablo. But it's, it is going to take away from some of the replayability, and I'll just leave it at that. We'll cover more on that next week. Uh, Ian, anything else to talk about about the website, the direction we're going to head? Well, uh, we are currently in the process of recruiting a bunch of people. So if you're interested, um, we've, or if anybody is interested, we um, definitely have a ton of work to be done. Um, primarily, we're looking to push a little bit more content on YouTube. So check us out on YouTube. Um, yeah, we're gonna have in, a lot of, uh... in the coming weeks, we're gonna, in two weeks, we're going to be posting a pretty big video on how to build a computer. It's so like a pretty complete guide. Uh, it'll be several videos long. It'll be slightly long, but you can skip around, like, so not watch. Uh, there's going to be a lot of introductory material um, that won't ne be really necessary for people that um, already know about the components. Uh, so we're going to go uh, pretty in depth with that. But um, this summer we should be getting quite a bit of content, and we're really looking forward to it. Yeah, especially with like all the new games coming out, there's going to be a lot of stuff to like mix up on. But for me. I'm going to have a few videos about the auction house and like how to work it because there's some really nice hidden features on the auction house that people don't really know about. And so I'm posting a video about that and like how to pretty much get what you need to get off the auction house and what you need to sell, all that good stuff. Cool. So definitely uh, check back here. Uh, anyway, that's about it for our uh, eighth podcast. Uh, thank you guys for uh, watch. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening in. Uh, make sure you check us out on ballnerd.com. Make sure you subscribe to us on our Twitch TV and our uh, YouTube page. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Uh, just keep checking Pretty back. Much all the social media. Uh, yeah, yeah, all of it. I just have to plug it all. So make sure you keep checking back. Um, leave comments. Talk with us. We'll, we love to respond. We'll, we'll chat up. And we'll think. You know, send us your ideas, your thoughts, anything cool you think of, uh, and we'll check you guys next week. Have a good day.